All right. So, without further ado, are we ready? I hope so. <laughs> all, <laughs> all right. You can run from yourself and you can run from your existential dread, but you can't run from your car's extended warranty. Welcome to QCP. <laughs> Last time, <laughs> last time we unfortunately lost a member of your party to the woods. You found your way into a greenhouse. You had a pretty gnarly fight with some of the denizens there, but you survived. Congratulations. Now, with the plants dead, with all of your friends living, what are y'all doing? I need a rest of Mundo. Yes. I am curtain. I am in pain physically right now. Before we bed down, we should probably check the rest of this place out and see if there's anything interesting in here. I was going to say that interesting or potentially dangerous left over. Maybe there's some mattresses upstairs or something. Is there is there actually an upstairs to this place or? It's a ah, out, isn't it? Ah no, man, that staircase is crumbled. Oh, so there was it, there was actually yeah. something back here though, right? Back there, yes. And there's not an upstairs, but there is a back there. Yo, yeah, well, I guess that's what I meant. Oh yeah, yeah. So what? Where are you looking to make your egress, Ray? Well, a lot of walk over here. Is there any like? Just want to kind of walk into here and start looking. So there is a door. The door is not locked. Um, you come into a little hallway. You you see a few doors. You can go to your left or to your right. Mm. Ada is uh, following you closely. She's... Yeah, Ellie's Ellie's gonna follow as well just to see. Um, oh, if she notices I think anything. Is gonna walk back over to the door, like the front door. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to, like, make sure that nothing opens this door? Girl, there's like, barely a door there. Oh, fuck. We're fucked. Okay, well, I'm gonna go back and just follow you guys. <laughs> I tried to keep us safe. No one cares, man. Tessa said, well, I tried. Yep. Shrug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm gonna go left. And Marcel has okay. to say, Azazel, help daddy up. He's feeling peckish. <laughs> Ada sort of turns around and looks back and she goes, we can all settle down when we... I think those rooms back there should be a little safer. She is going to go, though, hearing that you're having trouble getting up. She is going to come back and offer you a hand up. And um, he would look at her hands and be like, did you wash those? 
She's just gonna look at him. Do you want I'm to kidding. I'm him? kidding. And he would like reach out and <laughs> like, <laughs> like grab her hand. And his nozzle would kind of swoop up and like pinch onto his his like blazer jacket and try to like <laughs> lift him up on the other side. <laughs> um, just for fun. Tethys would look at Allie and go, I'm not sure he was kidding. <laughs> at How least, tall is at least he's getting better to not outright admit it. He's tall. Okay. He <laughs> is <laughs> uh where did I where is that again? I guess it's appearance. No? No? Oh, six two. Okay, so thankfully Ada had a total of 16 on her strength check. So she goes to pull him up and she kind of realizes that he's a lot taller than her. So she like grabs him with both hands and like uses her body as a counterweight to drag him up. And just about falls backwards into the bushes. There we go. On your feet? As much as I can be. Okay, good. Let's go join the others in the back and she's gonna kind of like hold her hand out like you go but in a nicer um, way Ali is going to send Aurelius ahead of Ray um, just because he's small and stealthy to make sure there's no surprises in those rooms <laughs> mm-hmm. alright so um, I will go ahead and tell you nope there is nothing back here in these rooms that is alive All right, we're clear. I don't like how you specified alive. That's not a nice word to use. <laughs> that, that is probably precisely how Ali phrases it exactly. I really just didn't see anything that was still alive. <laughs> well, if it's not that leaves, I'll just punch it. <laughs> All right, Ray, you said you're headed to the left? Yep. So you leave your little hallway here, and I'm going to get the laser pointer for you. All right, so you leave your hallway here, and you come in here. And there's a little doorway here. There's some stacked crates here. And then and crates. Ollie will go the other way. Okay. So the crates are full of... Um, it looks like at some point somebody meant to turn this into a research area. So there's a lot of, like, broken glass vials, what looks like, um, things like microscopes and, um, little Bunsen burners, but they're long since degraded and damaged. Ray um, actually would know a decent amount about this kind of stuff, because he has, <laughs> he, he is proficient with tinkerer's tools. Ah. Yep, everything there is straight crap. This shit's been here for a long time. Well, according to my expertise in fancy gadgets, you see, as a microscope, whoever used to work here was real smart looking. <laughs> and we all proceed into this room here. All right, this room is definitely looks like it was going to become an area of research. So it's set up for people to house and catalog specimens. You see where it looks like somebody had at some point meant to start a library, but once the ceiling caved in, the water has destroyed all of the books that are there. Um, it looks as though it had quite a lot of promise, but whatever was supposed to have happened never did. Hmm. Would I be able to, like, look around and maybe figure out what was supposed to happen? Make me an investigation check. Okay. That is a 21. All right. Ray, some of these books, as you go hunting, a few of them are not as damaged as they first appeared. Mm. One, of, one of them is, it appears to be, one of the ones you find, this is just, it's just weird. So it's called The Sleeping God. And when you open it and you crack it open, um, uh, yeah, whoever wrote it was either in the throes of madness or was smoking that good good because not only is the handwriting almost impossible to read, it, the, the parts you can read don't really make sense, but there are some drawings 
of what appears to be a series of black holes and someone has scribbled has scribbled wounds in reality I see her I see her they buried her in Rowan Oh, and you also oh. find some uh, specimen slides with tiny little leaves and small squirming splotches that are stretching little teeny tiny dark root-like tendrils out along the glass. Um, things like that. So like, they're like like almost worm-like, but with like tendrils coming off of them. It's like a bit. It's like if a piece of mold was putting out little mold tendrils, but those tendrils are actually moving. Um, while he's doing that, can I look in the other room? Yes. So, Allie, when you come in this room, um, it looks as though someone was trying... You see, So you see kind of what looks like a place where they're growing some additional uh, bullshit. But there's also a place you see here. It looks like someone... And I don't... The map doesn't reflect it. But in this area here, it looks like someone set up an almost temporary sort of little wooden room. Like they put the wooden panels up, but there's there's no ceiling to it or anything. Can I? Is there is there like notes or tools or anything of interest that might give us any clues? Anything there's that no... might tell us about the forest and anything like that? Are you going inside? A little temporary and like I said I don't have it on the map here but like a little temporary wooden room probably um, right about here very small can I mm. <laughs> we don't feel like we're in danger at the moment right can I take 10 minutes to ritually cast detect magic before I go poking around too deep and see if anything flares up <laughs> sure yeah you can do that how far out does detect magic reach it is Let's see. It'll last for up to 10 minutes. It is a 30-foot sphere centered on myself. Okay. And anything with magic, let's see. You can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic, and you learn at School of Magic in any spell can penetrate most barriers but is blocked by one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood or dirt. Okay. All right, yeah, you have some time to ritually cast that. So, Ali, it sounds like you go in that room and you are ritually casting to take magic. Tethys, what are you up to? She went to go grab a bowl of spaghetti. I oh, that's it. right. Oh, you, she has it. Mazel tov. I know, and it's mm -hmm. delicious. Um, oh, nice. Let's see. What do I want to do? Besides <laughs> You know what? I am a little bit hesitant to just, like, let's all go in these back rooms. Um, mm -hmm. Just in case something decides to crop up on us. So I'm going to stick out here um, with the other two, with Marcellus and Ada. Um, and I think she's just going to kind of walk around and just generally take a look and see what she can see. Or if anything's going okay. to her specifically. All right. Um, Tethys, is you, are you, in, make me an investigation check. Sure. Um, I took a screenshot, but it's very small. Get bigger. Okay. Get good. <laughs> Get um, good. And you said, um, investigation, you said? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I happen to be very good at those. Ooh. Watch me roll it now. <laughs> So that's going to be a 16. Okay. So with a 16, as you are looking around, most of the plants appear to be garden variety plants, overgrown. Um, as you are looking, you do happen to notice that the attendants that you all killed, you know, they're still there. But 
the more you see them, their bodies look almost as if they are human from the neck down. Mm. Wait, what? The attendants appear to be human from the neck down, albeit mm. maybe not in great shape. Are they are they still wearing clothes? Um, yeah, some of their clothes look are, are somewhat more battered, so two of them, the ones that we know came from Session Zero, their clothes are still in somewhat decent shape. Some of the other three, their clothes are a little more worn and tattered. Think- um but she's, on there. Gonna, she's gonna go through and kind of search and see if there's anything that would indicate like who these people were or anything interesting that she can find on their person. Ooh, so I'm, this... I'm not there, but a uh, pertinent question is their clothing from like like what time frame would their clothing put them in? Because their clothing is a little bit outdated, not outrageously so. I would say a few. Um, they do, I will say, there's something interesting to note that their dresses, that you can almost create a fashion timeline from these three, stretching backwards. Hmm. Well, somebody was wearing things from last season. Tethys, I will say, you recover three brooches from the ones who appear to be more tattered. But brooches are a recurring theme for Tethys and I, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I have a question. Tethys, oh, give me one second, and I will answer yeah, yeah. it. Tethys, each of the brooches has a very ornate letter carved into it. The letters A, T, and E. Hmm. Each one has one of those letters. Okay. Alright, so what was your question? Um. One second. Uh, so... This, like, weird fungus-looking thing? What color is it? Uh, where's the fungus thing? The the, the thing that was on the specimen slide. The it's fungus-looking black. thing. Okay, black. It is black. It is jet black. Almost phantom black. I mean, it's, like, moving, right? Like, yes, it is. It's alive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? I've got some salted meat in my bag. I'm gonna... <laughs> Oh no! I'm, I'm, I'm like, hyperfiddling over I'm, here. <laughs> I'm gonna put my yeah, I'm gonna put some um, my leather gloves on that I keep my tinkerer's kit. I'm gonna grab some tweezers and I'm gonna pull the weird stuff out and I'm gonna like place it onto a piece of like meat that's been salted. Oh, so why would you? Why would you? <laughs> oh boy! Ray yeah. is d- dangerously <laughs> curious, but his wisdom is not great, so he doesn't actually. Oh, <laughs> and I'm not there. Through. Oh, man. You know, I love curiosity. I love it when people are curious and they want to interact with the environment. No, 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 no. I think this is how children learn best is by doing. Oh, I agree. And by consequences. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I'm no dying. Um... <laughs> Yeah. It's not a living piece of meat. But... Where where are we in my in my ten minutes before I hear him scream? I don't want to know how far left I have to go on my spell. Oh baby, you are right in the middle of it. Oh, you no. don't even know what's happened yet to be screaming. You gonna hold on to that scream a minute. Oh no. <laughs> so I what I am going to need you to do is I am going to need you to make me make me a wisdom saving throw. Okay, okay, okay. Oh no! I swear to God, if initiative comes out of your mouth. <laughs> Holy shit! Holy yes. shit! I got a, a natural twenty. Oh thank yeah. God! <laughs> Sale, as you hold, as you, as you, as you apply the specimen to the salted meat, the speed at which it begins to consume that meat is incredible. Within, I would say, within Put two it back. Or three seconds. Put most it of the back. Meat is simply filthy and the larger it gets you realize it's not really mold so much as it appears to be an almost oily substance with great integrity and surface tension gross Mm -hmm. and as it grows as it Mm -hmm. devours the meat which you can feel softening and shrinking in your hand like you're in like you're involuntarily squeezing a sponge you for a moment 
almost think you hear it say something. I don't like that. What you doing with it? I don't know that very much. Um. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> Put it back. <laughs> He's gonna pull the ja his javelin off his back and s like stab it into the meat and then hold the meat farther away from him and like watch it for a little bit longer. <laughs> no! <laughs> you you put it on that javelin? Yeah. Baby, it is eating your javelin now. Oh wait, I'm gonna throw the javelin across the room <laughs> no! and then oh. scream, Ali, I need fire right now. <laughs> How, how long has it been? Because I'm the closest person to hear this, but I'm focusing on something else entirely. Um, I mean, you can you stop know. your focus if you have to. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know what? how much attention she's paying. Is my point. Uh, make me make me a a perception check, but make you a disadvantage because you're concentrating on something else. How 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 long has it been? Um. I don't know that you that before uh, Mr. Scientist did this. I don't know that it would have been a full ten minutes. All right. Well, I'm glad I did it ritually because if I lose this spell, <laughs> like, yeah. I would have hate to have lost this slot. Oh. It, well, let's see if you even hear him first. Let's see. Um. One of them was out of the tray. Do you want me to use that number? Or do you want me to re-roll that? You can re-roll it. Plus, you said perception, right? And disadvantage. Mm -hmm. um, is your focus. That is, that is a 10 on the dice plus 5 for a 15. You do hear him raising hell over there in that other room. Uh. There is a slight muffled curse as she has to drop the spell um, <laughs> before she rushes to the door. And you all see her kind of, those of you in the greenhouse, hear her, see her, that flash of her blue dress as she runs past mm -hmm. the hallway. And you hear her go, Ray, right. what are you doing? Stop, 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 stop. Don't go any farther. Don't go any farther. Um, there is a, a thing, a slug. Of, the rooms were know. clear. Where did it come from? Oh, can you say that again, please? Sorry. The rooms were clear. Where did it come from? There was always, uh -huh. like, glass specimen fella, and it, like, must have smelled the meat in my bag because it leapt through the air and ate my meat in my bag. Inside like, check. Oh, no. <laughs> because this is what she does for a living is read people. So. I don't think you're going to roll uh, lower than me, but... <laughs> I was about to say, if she don't get it, I'm proficient at telling people. <laughs> we got two people that are good at reading people in this party. Ain't nobody blind to us for shit. <laughs> Ray's in trouble with both of his mom. I rolled a seven. I rolled a twelve. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you mean you know I'm not being honest. Um, what just... did you do? I was curious. I found this little black worm looking thing. It's not moving on my own. I was like, hmm. And after is it, is everything we've seen is it in this still? forest, you fed it. I mean, you oh. all, she's not being quiet. You all would probably hear <laughs> her. Was, what, 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 she's, was the... can, can she cast my, um... <laughs> Burn it, please. He's coming for me. It ain't my javelin, too. I don't have fire, but I've got cold, and she's going to cast Ray of Frost. <laughs> All right. It it freezes and shatters. God damn it, you giant. And she's, like, grabbing the door frame and kind of shaking a little bit. What's going on? Ray. After everything we've seen in the forest, you go and mess with something like that without telling one of us first. Mess with I knew what? I would be told not to do it. There was this weird black substance, all right, and it was like, no, 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 more out of his glass specimen slide. As you, you know. You watch as her face, like her mouth opens and closes, and she struggles for a moment, like 
she really wants to say something and doesn't even she doesn't even know what she wants to say so she just turns around and walks away and slips Listen, past Marcel. I know I know I'm not a good thinker through of things but I promise you it's is valuable information we have now because yeah. I also found a I found a book too Another mistake like that, and I vote that we feed Ray to it. No, 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 listen, okay? This is gonna really shiver your timbers, alright? <laughs> there was a book in there. It is called The Sleeping God, alright? The book has The Sleeping God on it. And most of it looks like someone smoked some, like, plant or something. <laughs> and just started scribbling. But, like, I got a book with me, but we won't take it, I won't take it with us. I just, I just got it here. To look at it, it, it didn't, but in turn, it's got like these like blobs and holes all over the pages, like black holes on the pages, and it's got words that actually make sense. All of a sudden, it says wounds in reality. Oh, I see her, oh, I see her. They buried her in Roman. Ollie has sure. gone back to casting Detect Magic. <laughs> <laughs> This is kind of the look on Tethys' face right now. <laughs> and Marcellus is like, so let me get this clear. You saw something about sleep, sleeping gods and you decided to wake one up by feeding it. Once again, I'm smart, but I'm going to think things through. I thought it was maybe looking for like a live meat. Right? I, I wanted to sit on dumb your, meat instead. What is your javelin made of? I would assume wood. Yeah, it's made of wood. Is there any was it does it have a metal tip? Yeah, I had a metal tip. As it from where it is frozen as it sort of crumbles and falls apart, you see it's devoured the wood entirely, but not the metal. Interesting. Well, that's a good bit of information to know for later. Consider my timbers shivered. And, like, just in... I don't think she's going to go in there. She's, <laughs> she is not about that life. Is there any of it still alive? No, it is quite dead. Okay. Ada looks at it, and she, she kind of she gets really pale, and you see, like, a little fresh trickle of blood come out of her nose. And she just kind of, like, leans very slowly on the wall. Are you okay, darling? I really just need to find my lantern so we can... That's it. I just need my lantern. And then we can go. Well, well, Ellie's looking for it. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, everyone. I just... I, I shouldn't have done that one, oh, no. At least it's dead. Probably mercy to us and it. Just to and know just what to it be, was. And just to be clear, we find your lantern and then you go. But what does that mean for us? She's I'll... taking us with her. Yes, of course. I would never leave you all here. But I can't find the way out to leave you out until I have my lantern. Well, I'm not sure that I have it in me to go out and fight whatever else we may come across. Do you want to find a way to rest somewhere that might be relatively safe? I think this part of the greenhouse is probably our best bet for the night. We all will, all will stay awake and watch for everyone since I'm... That is what I, I should do, right? Sure. At least just keep an eye out for now. Tethys will look over to Allie and go, How's it going? How long have I had since I restarted the casting? Uh, you know what? I'll give you the ten minutes now. Okay. Um, so, Allie holds up a, a finger for a moment, finishes the spell, and you see this light flare in her eyes before it settles away and everything that's magical within 30 feet of me is going to to me nobody else would see it but to me it would be flare up 
So anything I have on me that I know is magic, anything I have on me that I don't know is magic, and anything <laughs> in the place or anything that anybody else has. All right, Allie, the sword that you found lights up. The acorn that you found lights up. You see light, so these are sort of um, here. Oops. These are sort of like wicker like baskets. You see light coming out of these wicker baskets. Okay. And the the room you described? You don't see anything in there. Okay. So she's going to glance at the room, kind of shrug, and then beeline for the baskets and pull them open. Um, assuming, assuming that the School of Magic doesn't indicate that something might be dangerous. Like, if it's necrotic, she's not going to touch it. No, um, it doesn't look dangerous. Okay, so she's going to open the baskets and see what's there. So, um, Allie, inside, you see a box that says, um, crate two of 28. Okay. Inside that box, there are, uh, roll me a d8. D8. Four. There are five paper birds, unwritten on. Okay. There, there's a cracked drift globe. Look at this globe. <laughs> um, there is a looks like a, a bone carved ring. So there's sort of a sleeping moon face that has been carved into this bone ring. Quite stylized, very pretty, very polished. Um, and then there is a pocket watch. Okay, all of these lit up. Um, the pocket watch and the ring are not, but the paper birds and the tracked glyph. Correct drift globe arm. Okay. Um, so in the baskets, that's it. Um, she looks at the group and she goes, uh, give me a little over ten more minutes and I can tell you all what these do. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. There's one more item in there as well. Oh! A lantern. Is it Ada's lantern? It's glowing. She um, pulls the lantern out very carefully. Is this yours, dear? Yeah, that's it. Thank you. I and she kind of looks at you for a minute. Where your your you said your jacket. I think when we spoke, you said the the sword. Jacket, yeah, I had. Mm -hmm. I think I probably had the the jacket over the sword. Um, but as I moved for the baskets to identify to pull them out, it probably got all rumpled. That or um, pulled over when I ray of frost the blob. <laughs> She stops and she goes, where did you get that sword? <laughs> and she immediately looks very serious. In the train station. Is there a problem? That's my brother's. Now then. And she unties it and hands it over. Don't suppose you have a knife or anything you can give me back and trade? She will actually take her rapier off and give it to you, Allie. Here. <sighs> Thank you, love. Uh, when we're out of this place, I'll give this back to you first as well, uh, but I'm guessing you'll want that one over she anything just, else. She just affixes it to the waist of her pants and doesn't say anything else. Alright, as I was saying, um, we've got a little bit of a collection here. If you all are willing to give me another 10 to 11 minutes, I can start the process of seeing what we have and what it can do. Um, actually, it, it may take, let me see if it's 10 minutes per object or if it's 10 minutes total. I think it's per object. It might take a little over 10 minutes then if anybody wants to sit. Gladly. And she'll sit up against the wall. Marcella starts dusting an area on the floor for himself <laughs> to like lean and sit down. Yeah, it is it is ten minutes per object. So the, the birds, the globe, the acorn, and the potion that was not a healing potion is what Allie would focus on. So that's gonna be forty minutes. Okay. Which one um, are you starting with? I think she's gonna start with the acorn, because that is okay. After after the the blob, that one is most concerning to her. Mm hmm. Okay. So you are working on identifying the acorn. Yeah. It has been kind of peer peer curiously at the room somebody constructed. That's strange. Why would they build that here?
She's going to look over at Ray. Ray, how about we investigate one more thing? Oh, what you want me to investigate? She's going to point at the assembled room. Let's see what's in there. Right. Wait, where is it at? Right here. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's, it is kind of in this right here. Gotcha. And okay. you would hear Marcellus yell, I don't need to remind you, don't feed anything, do I? <laughs> My, uh... And I will say, while y'all are doing this, Allie has gotten into her bag and pulled out a little silver diadem with a pearl that hangs right in the middle of her forehead and put it on to begin casting Identify. <laughs> nice. So, Ray, as you look in the created room, it looks like a roof was under construction. So as you get in there, you see where it looks like they were getting ready to put one in and never got around to it. But on one of the walls that faces towards the glass, there is a tiny pinhole that has been carved into the wall. And a few, it looks like some notes scattered on the floor. They appear to be diagrams and you see, it looks like this room was being built to be a camera obscura. Hmm. And so one of the notes reads, a camera obscura. It brings images from the outside inside upside down and reversed. I can see her in the camera obscura. I don't know how to bring her through. Is this handwriting the same as the one that was written in the Sleeping God book? Oh yeah. Did did the book light up for me? If, if no, Ray... the book was... Okay. Hmm. So someone was trying to summon somebody. <laughs> hmm. Ray, what did you see in there? Well, I know I will tell you about that book with the woes and reality and stuff. Yeah. Same person who was writing in that book wrote this book too. Building a fancy camera obscura room in here. And the book says the desk notes here. One of them says, I can see her through the camera obscura, but I can't bring her through. Ellie Somebody. very distractedly goes, who was her, darling? I don't really know who of the, maybe who the sleep, maybe she's the sleeping god. Also very distracted, but would that ring any bells for me? It does not. Ella just kind of shrugs and <laughs> goes back to it. Yeah, Ada looks similarly puzzled and goes to sit down. So, Allie, as you finish identifying working with the acorn, this acorn is or has the effect of the enlarge or reduce spell. All right, uh, first one's down. Ray, darling, I think you might get the most use of this, but uh, feel free to trade with the others. It will... Um, on pawn consumption, I believe, give you the effects of a spell which allows you to either grow uh, to a, quite a bit larger than you already are, or shrink. Um, and she'll hand the acorn over. Uh, so is it just a one-use item, or...? Yep. It's just one acorn. Give the acorn to Ray. Let me take that out of my inventory. Um, and then she's going to start on the birds. All right. Working on the birds. Is Marcellus able to make anything out from what they've discovered? Um, what are you doing to try to figure it out? Um, for the camera obscurus. Mm-hmm. Um, could he do like a arcana check to see if he could figure out maybe why it is, why it didn't work? Yeah, make me an arcana check. I maybe help with that since I'm proficient and I'm yes, already in the room in the first place. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Uh, 14. Now you get a 5 added to that. Ooh. So, for a total of 19? Mm-hmm. Yep. Alright. Marcellus. You've seen some camera obscuras. They're quite trendy. People are fascinated by the way that they work. And, you know, there are some people who believe that a camera can take your soul by rendering your image. Once upon a time, you saw someone through a camera obscura. You know them well. Um... Who would that person have been? That would have been your patron. Hmm. Who's your patron, huh? It is... Oh, you don't have to tell us. You can let us discover you don't. that. <laughs> okay. So how exactly did Ray help with that? Maybe Ray is talking... Maybe Ray talking about what he read... What he read in the notes. Okay. Could have prompted that. So, Marcellus, you know there is some precedent for people who are very, very good with magic to use camera obscuras to try to get at things that they normally would not see. However, you have not ever heard of someone using a camera obscura to bring someone somewhere. And I'm sorry, I'm taking notes. So, (laughs) he knows that Normally, camera obscuras say that first part again. So sometimes some people who are very, very good at magic have used camera obscuras to see other places, a bit like scrying. But no one has ever successfully brought someone across using a camera obscura. Okay, perfect. I'm just noting that here. <laughs> what, are, what are the birds? So these are paper birds. You write your message on them with where you want them to go, and they will carry your message. They're basically sending spells. Mm-hmm. Or mail that you don't have to put a stamp on. Yeah. And this particular image sorry in the camera is not someone that i know correct so this the camera right now i don't think right the camera obscura here does not work because the room is not dark enough because they never finished construction on the roof okay so this one isn't working um ali so what are you moving on to after the paper birds probably the potion um, okay. The bird, she would she would hold up the box and explain. She go, um, I I between Aurelius and my uh, message ability, I'm not sure that I'm the best person to be in need of these. Uh, those of you who don't have like magic, does does anyone want these? Does one save you? Good idea. Pettis will take them. Okay. Hey. You said you're going on to the potion now? Yeah, the potion. Which you've told me what that one is already. Um, oh, fuck. Yep. Um, <laughs> no. Is, is that a sound effect or is that somebody's dog? Oh, that's you. You all can hear this. Oh. Do do I manage to finish identifying the the potion before, or does that get interrupted? That gets interrupted. Um, Ali will it. curse under her breath and start putting everything away for later. God's Aiden. sake! What is it now? We need to leave. We need to leave now. All what right, all what right. Uh, what what is it? So we're prepared. It's called the Prince of the Forest. We cannot be here. We have got to go. And Lantern? as she says, Lantern, she's gonna turn it on, and she doesn't seem to add need to add fuel to it or anything. As soon as she opens it, a bright light shines out of it, 
showing a way forward. And you see, yeah. as where where the light goes, you are able to see these tiny little forest spirits. They look to be made of clay with kind of interesting little hats, although probably right now none, oh. none of you pay much attention to the hats. You said it was bright light? Yes. Allie does wince and kind of turn her head away. So does Marcellus. He sort of <laughs> kind of hisses a little and like pulls his cloak over his eyes. In the distance, you hear the sound of trees falling as something shakes the ground. Water puddles begin to ripple around you. You see huge trees, trees so large, even Ray could not put his arms around them, beginning to fall as something thrashes and screams and flails in the forest, knocking them over like they're too Um, I have, I have a couple slots left. I am going to cast Bless at, let's see, one additional creature for each spell level of But first I'm gonna cast Bless at second level, um, just just to help with the saves and stuff, which I imagine we're probably gonna have to make checks and whatnot. Um, so, so that's four people I can get. Um, and so we have not rested yet, correct? No. Nope. So no. I, I'm gonna give everybody but myself a bless. Ray would like to take up the back so that he can protect everyone if need be. Okay, who's ta- um, Ada's gonna take the front because she has the lantern. And Marcellus would say, for God's sakes, what now? Ali's gonna be more in the rear uh, just for eyesight. Uh, very I guess. Quick. Oh! oh! <laughs> Wouldn't Marcellus have had enough time to rest since he didn't do anything in that entire hour we were just kind of screwing around? Because you said it was like 40 minutes plus the two tens that we already had. Um, no, but I didn't finish. Um, and I did stand up to investigate the camera. Yeah, yeah Marcellus was yeah. up and about doing no, things. No, we, we, I did maybe 30 minutes worth of magic. 30, 35 right, if you count me being interrupted. I was sitting the whole time. <laughs> oh, rested, rested a little. I rested a little bit. All right. So the way this is going to work is initiative is going to be attract, be set by who is first. So Ada is first initiative. Who's behind Ada? Tethys will be. Okay, Tethys. Who is behind Tethys? Allie's going to make Marcellus go in front of her. <laughs> Are you going to make me? By flat out pointing out that she's slower and she does not intend to be run over when you panic. Tethys will help. She'll grab him by the collar and pull him along. <laughs> and then um, and then she will make sure that Ray is behind her because she knows better than to try to bully Ray. <laughs> and he's kind of slapping at Tethys's hand and is like... <laughs> Careful, do you know how much this shirt costs? You're going to wrinkle it. <laughs> Come on, you pompous You know, brat. when you had me make that image, this is not what I thought you were going to use it for. <laughs> she employed you to oh. do third dirty work. Can you bring um, Azazel to this map, please? I can, yeah. Aurelius is on my shoulders, holding on for dear life. He <laughs> <Piece> said <of> shit. <laughs> Oh boy. Actually, again. as soon as I will probably actually dismiss Aurelius to a pocket dimension because I'm not risking him. If we're in that much danger, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm dismissing Aurelius. And Marcellus would see that and say, mm, Azazel, stay close. This one might be a little bit too big for a sting. <laughs> Can you, this not, thing, can you not temporarily send him away and call him back again later? And it's also would kind of whimper a little bit and I'd be like, mm, yes, she probably has a point. I'll call you later. And he like, Azazel whispers and you see him like sort of tuck into himself and then bloop, like blip out of existence. <laughs> Um, Aurelius's fading out was more in a sparkling of glittering light. He kind of glittered out. 
<laughs> yeah, I have I have two questions really quick. Mm hmm So when it's like knocking these trees over, is anything happening to the trees over? Are they like disintegrating or like turning into like something weird or anything? Or are they just falling over because it's so large that it's just knocking them over? You know, Ray, that's a really excellent question. You have seen the way this these trees are behaving. They are dissolving. Oh, just no. like your lance did. With a thick, dark, vanta black goo. As you all get out of the greenhouse, you're able to see the creature. It is huge. And you can't see where its body ends. It is so long. It is l just quite long. It doesn't necessarily have distinct limbs either, although you see great tentacles of gloop reaching out and behaving like limbs, Aww. knocking over trees, grabbing onto trees, appearing and disappearing into the body at will. Well, the go on, thing... Ray. Don't you want to feed it a snack? <laughs> <laughs> the only thing about it that is not this just pitch black oil-like substance is a gigantic steer skull with yeah, I've... some strangely human features. I have an idea. Okay. I don't know if I can carry that as I'm running. What are you trying to do? I, I would like to, um, so it's obviously chasing after us as a whole. Yes. Um, what I'd be able to take, like, maybe like one of my last pieces and meet my bag, and I have a hunting trap. And that hunting trap is made of solid metal. <laughs> okay, you wanna... Would I, be able to, I would like to, like, set the trap and, like, s just kind of throw it down and see if it takes the bait. Because maybe it'll slow it down a little bit for us to get ahead of it. Uh, Ray, how big is this trap? Probably. Like... Oh no, it's 25 pounds, so I assume it's not small. Mm hmm. Okay. Doesn't really have a specific size. That runs over it like it wasn't even there. That's fine. Okay, I, I need to step away real quick. I will be right back. Okay. Actually, do we want to take a five minute break before we get into this? Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. Okay, are we ready? Ready. Yeah. Well, no, but yes. <laughs> All right, so we have determined initiative based on positions in initial positions anyway, in the line here. So what we are next going to, so just a few general rules, there are no opportunity attacks during this, um, you are going to need to make sure you have a way to track exhaustion. You can oh, dash Lord. a number of times equal to three plus your constitution modifier. For each dash after that, you must succeed on a DC 10 constitution check or take one level of exhaustion. Your speed becomes zero when you le reach level five. Oh, oh no. Thankfully I have a high con. Copy and paste that in the chat. Yes, I can. Because I will absolutely forget that in like two minutes. Did you homebrew <laughs> rules just for this? No, actually, these are from the DM's guide. Oh, wow. There's a lot of really random stuff in there that like, because <laughs> it's so poorly laid out, you just don't hear about them. Like it has spell points for sorcerers. It's like an alternate <laughs> way to do casting for them. Oh, Where was okay. that exhaustion tracker again? I know it's on here somewhere. That I'm not sure about. I have I have There's read it, but 20. I don't remember this part. <laughs> Here, let me just do a quick Google. Uh, hmm. Um. So, Brandy, the bless lasts for a minute. So let us know when okay. our minute is up. Will do. I think that's what each round is. How long do we say a round is? Six, six seconds? seconds. Usually, so okay, it should so about, be ten about rounds. Ten rounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will, I'll make tallies then, um, so I guess the first round is round zero, so when we get to um, Ada's next turn, I'll start tallying down, or trying okay. to remember to put tallies down. That sounds good. Okay, are we ready? As we're gonna be. <laughs> Alright, so with Ada in the lead with the lantern, you all begin to run. And another really fun feature <coughs> of D&D &D chases 
is that after each person, so on your turn, you are going to roll me a d20. This will introduce a complication. Complications affect the person behind you. Oh no. Um, Ada has rolled a 15. So what Ada's going to do, so because um, 11 to 12, 11 to 20 is no complication. As she moves, she's going to angle herself. And so I think maybe for the purposes, because this map is only so large, let's have each square be 10 feet. Okay. And then once we get to the end of the map, we will reset. So Ada, because she's had no complications, she is going to make a heavy crossbow attack against the creature. But unfortunately, in her haste, she misses. <laughs> All right. 10, 20. Okay, so this should be this should be right about where she is. Tethys, you're up next. Are you dashing? Or are you moving as normal? What you doing? I think I'm gonna for now move as normal. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, but you said each square is thirty feet. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm right here. Thirty feet. Um, and let me roll my. Mm -hmm. Did I roll first before I move? Well, it um, doesn't affect me. It affects the person behind yeah. me. So it so it doesn't really matter. I would probably say move and then roll your. Okay. Um, that is a twelve. Okay. Um, you also have an opportunity to make an attack against this thing. She's gonna take her short bow. Um, actually, what is the max distance on that? Is it three twenty? Um, yeah, three twenty. It looks like. Yeah, we're gonna um. Yeah, we're gonna do short bow attack on this thing. Okay. And that's gonna be a fifteen to hit. All right, that does not hit. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> you the arrow. Hit. The arrow kind of lands near it, and it just consumes the arrow, except for the head. Ugh. All right, Marcellus, you are up. Marcellus would see what happened to the trap that Ray laid down, and he would say, oh, bugger this, and he would dash. He's like, forget that. I'm hauling ass. And he's going to attempt <laughs> to make a dash to get as far ahead as he can. <laughs> okay, go for it. And that is a con? Or so you get um three let let me double check the wording on that. So you five get five dashes, right? Three plus your con mod. Right. Number of okay. dashes for, so... for free essentially. Okay, okay, so this is total for the whole thing. Or per turn. Uh for the whole thing. Okay. And dash doubles my movement distance? Yes. So I can move seventy feet. Wow, look at us, 35 feet base movement. Yep, and he yeah. is like, you see him kind of <laughs> gain this unworldly speed as he just like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. He literally charges in between Tethys and Ada and is like, excuse me, coming through, <laughs> and like runs past them. Like 10, 20, 30, 40. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he, he literally is counting that as he runs. <laughs> this is exactly how I picture it here in the chat. I mean, honestly, it's me at the haunted house in high school ah. when I walked past my friends and left them all standing there. Uh huh. Um, mm -hmm. Because I will leave your ass. <laughs> all right. And Marcellus, roll me a d24 complication. Oh, I don't like oh. this rule. It hurts oh, my feelings. Uh -huh. Oh, 17? 17, all right. You are able to make an attack against it if you would like to. He would turn around and cast... Um, hopefully I have range for this. Hold on. Oh, okay. 
good for me for hauling ass because now I can't <laughs> do anything. That's um, okay. He would turn around and launch an Eldritch Blast at it. Okay. Don't forget your D4. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, make a ranged spell attack against... It. Okay, hold on. Please, 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 please. Oh, another mm -hmm. 17. 21 plus an additional for 25. Ooh, that hits. Roll damage. Okay. And nine points of damage. All right. Okay, that brings us to Allie's turn. Okay. And just to get this right, oh. Warlock Mechanics, if it's a cantrip, I can continue to cast that, right? I just can't yeah, cast that's... it at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cantrips are always going to just be in infinite use. Right, you okay. Just, you can't upcast a cantrip. They're just... Exactly. Yeah. Okay, good. Just making sure I had that right. Okay. All right. Can I um do I have to roll before I know if I can attack or not, or can I attack and then move? You can you know, so the you can only attack if you roll a certain number. So okay. if you roll the otherwise no complication. So, so I have to move, roll, and the roll determines if I can attack or not. Yes. Okay. So 10, 20, 30, she's gonna her full movement there. Um you said a d20. <laughs> uh, that is a nine. Oh, okay. Oh. So. I don't like how happy Brandy was about that. Right? <laughs> okay. All right. So that brings us to Ray's turn. Ray, as you are running, this particular stretch of ground is densely packed with what appears to be like stones or other unsavory things jutting out of the ground. I'm going to need you to make me a acrobatics check, please. Okay. That's a 17. Okay. You managed to skillfully dodge around it. Okay. Um. Hmm. Boy, this beer is strong. I, I am definitely wanting to protect the people in front of me, so let me check one thing really fast. I know I just got this, but okay. so is this acorn of like this acorn of the you know growth or whatever? Mm -hmm. Does it hold its own concentration? Yes. Okay, so this is a, this is not a great idea, but I'm doing it because I. This is probably the best option for Ray to protect the people who he has in front of him. So he's going to go ahead. I'm going to take the acorn and activate activate it however. Maybe like crush it or something in my hand. And... You gotta eat it. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I eat it. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. And Ray... Ray is <laughs> massive now. He is considered huge in terms of carrying capacity. <laughs> he already has powerful build which puts him at large so he mm -hmm. is now considered huge in terms of lifting power <laughs> um, and then I mean I also get advantage on strength uh, strength checks and saving throws um, yeah so and I am huge conk man I can lift like half a ton now <laughs> um, I kind of just start moving forwards, um, and as I'm running, I, I'm keeping pace. I'm trying to basically sort of almost protect, um, you know, Allie, because I know she's the one mm -hmm. that's keeping us, like, <laughs> safe. And I will look down at her, like, from my, like, almost probably, like, 20 feet tall <laughs> creature, like, place and go, what a lift. I, uh... Yes, please. And he's just gonna lift her and put her on his shoulder, because oh I can't God. imagine she's even like a fifth of his total carrying capacity. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like to imagine she's dangling over his shoulder, just seeing this thing barreling at them like a freight train. In, in prime <laughs> position to let loose, raise a frost whenever I get the chance. <laughs> yes. Um, 
Now I'm gonna say, I mean, the, the, the picking up, picking her up is probably an action. Well, the activation of the, whatever. I'm not gonna do any kind of attacks this turn. Um, That's okay. Excuse me, you do need to roll a complication. Yes. I will use my bonus action to rage just in case. Okay. Oof, that's a seven. All right. So this, so Ray, as you were running, you see some of the brownies. You can't see them very well because they're mostly, they're not illuminated by the lantern, but it seems as though the lantern has somehow made the ones touched by it even somewhat visible. And they're, they won't get in the path, but you see them kind of making like these upward motions and these great vines shoot out of the ground, trying to grab at the creature chasing you. Mm. So he's going to need to make a dexterity saving throw, dexterity check. It is his Um. Well. He actually does not make the save. The vines temporarily ensnare him. Oh, snap. Yay. All right. So this will bring us to the front of the pack. Marcellus, you are up. Um, I would turn around and look at, uh, how giant Ray has gotten, and I'd be like, well, looks like he's taking care of that, and I would take just my normal movement speed now. Okay. Okay. And stop. Oh, I guess it'd be like this far. Um, and then I'm gonna roll my d20. See what mm-hmm. happens. Ooh. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Uh eight. Why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, Tethys, Tethys, what's your dex modifier? Oh Lord. Oh, oh, I want to tell you. You got to tell me. Lie, make something up. I know, right? (laughs) It's 10,000, that's what it is. Um, (laughs) It's uh, plus three. Okay, Ada's dex mod is actually higher than yours, so this will affect her. When I'm her head just slipped. I'm not mad. So, um, as Ada is, she moves ahead of you, and she's making her movement... Um, she only gets a step or two ahead before this absolute flock of birds just comes flying out of the woods, disturbed by one of the trees that the creature has knocked down. So she is going to have to make a dexterity saving throw. Don't forget the Uh, d4. I did roll it. I got a flat one on that d4. Oh. (laughs) But I did make the save. So she kind of like ducks and swats but manages to not be affected. So, it, 10, 20, 30. She's not trying to get too far ahead, but she is running. So, let's see. 13. All right, so she's gonna make another crossbow shot at the creature. It does not hit. Once again, it whiffs and misses, and she she curses and says something very unladylike. Uh, not in common. This is a different. It's a wordy dirt in a different language. So that brings us to Tethys. It's your turn. Out of curiosity, what language? Um, the her her nasty dirty word was in Elvish. Ali understood it. <laughs> It was something very derogatory about fucking that thing's mother. <laughs> oh. Oh, Tethys understood it too. <laughs> Is he some rich folk language I'm too poor to understand? <laughs> uh, Tethys speaks Elvish, common, and abyssal. <laughs> uh, speak abyssal? Do. Um, so 
so at this point, um, anyone that's near Tethys hears like a very audible like hissing noise just <laughs> from her person. Uh -huh. um, and she is going to, for now, keep her normal speed. Um, let's see. I think she's going to try with the with the short bow again and see. But I don't have high bow. So we'll, have to... well, do make sure you roll first to see if you can do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dirt. Um... <laughs> How? I love you. What tab does um, the languages live under? It's on your main one. It should, should just be in the top, bottom left. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Okay. Where it lists, like, all your armor and weapons and stuff. Gotcha. Um, it's gonna be a whopping five, so no attacky right. for me. No attacky for you. Alright. So, <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna have Allie and Ray, because Allie is being carried by Ray, we're just going to have them go on their turn. So... Ray. Yes. You're gonna like this. Um, mm -hmm. I need you to make me an athletics check. Oh, that's perfect. I have advantage on those. <laughs> that is a 26. That's a natural 20 plus, a plus 6. <laughs> yeah, so, so as you were running, there is a tree, there's like a tree um, trunk in your way, but you just step on it and crush it like it's a soda can. <laughs> oh, he's like a Lego. What's a Lego? <laughs> All right, what you doing on your turn? I'm obviously moving forwards. Okay. Um, I will offer Tethys the opportunity to get on my other shoulder because <laughs> I still have like 800 pounds of carrying capacity at least. <laughs> if so um, if, um, if Asi made that uh, athletics check, if Ali got a little nervous and gripped him a little too hard and, like dug her nails in. Would that count as an attack so he could keep his rage going? <laughs> I don't think Allie's teeny tiny little baby nails could pierce his stone skin. It, it's the attempt that matters. Um, no, that's not going to count no. as an attack. No, oh, okay. No. I tried. No, I'll try to him. I don't care. Um, <laughs> 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 Tethys said, stay mad. <laughs> Stay mad, ho. Stay mad. Uh, <laughs> um, Since Ray is carrying me, yeah, can I launch happy. Rays of Frost at the thing? Um, you know what? Uh, sure. I'll let you get one off. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Actually, here we go. So since he's carrying both of you, if he rolls enough that he doesn't have a complication... I'll let him like squeeze you like a grenade launcher and you can like pop out a ray of frost. <laughs> That's a 17. 17. Okay, Allie, uh, he, he gives you a, a squeeze with his bicep. You don't poop, but some ray of frost can come out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works that way, but okay. You don't poot. <laughs> I'm joking. That's the important part. <laughs> that Ooh. is the important part because. That might not be a clean one under the given circumstances. Uh, that is a 15 to hit. Does not hit. Okay. Damn it, Gumby. All right, Ray, give me a complication roll. Yeah, that was the 17. Oh, that was the 17. All right. Yeah. Just kidding. I, I, boy, I've not had a lot of that beer. You mm. know, if you give it about another half hour, you can really start pushing the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so it is now the creature's turn. Um, so that is 10, 50. Okay. This brings us to Marcellus' turn. Um, Marcellus is going to move his normal movement speed again. So that would be, um, you know, right, like here. <laughs> okay. And he's going to roll his d20. All right. And pray that it's not something <laughs> terrible again. <laughs> oh, God. Another eight. Why? Uh, damn. 
All right, so at Ada's turn, that swarm of fucking birds is back. They hate her, apparently. More bird. Let's see if she can make the dex check. What a burden. Nah. Aww. Nah. All right. Oops. I'm so tempted to use acid splash just against the birds. <laughs> Fuck you, particular birds. Say fuck All right. off. She does make the she makes the deck save, thankfully. So she is going to use a dash. So she's going to go ten. So she's going to get ahead of Marcellus. She hikes up her skirts and just books it. And as she goes by you, Marcellus, you can hear the clanking of metal. Yeah. She got them armored stays. Thought it All was right. a chastity belt. <laughs> okay, so she is going to she is going to make another crossbow attack against the creature. That's a nat one. Oh so, no. So she goes to make the shot and one of those fucking birds nearly knocks the crossbow out of her hands. Hit Ray, yeah. keep him raging. <laughs> Alright, um, this brings us to Ray and the lady's turn. I'm going to use a dash action to zoom up here. Okay. Oh my god. Oh. Zoom! I almost imagine he's like a transformer. What's fighting with me? What's fighting with me? Let me have my turn. <laughs> I wondered what you were doing. Just, uh, mate, mate, that nope, not nice. mm. like, ah! All right. Ray, roll me a complication. Okay, okay. So if he passes um, and there's no complication, do Allie and I both get to attack? You know what? Sure. Oh, that was a five. Oh, darn okay. it. <laughs> well, also not darn it, because that's the monster. <laughs> All right. So as you are passing... There are more fallen trees. It is going to have to make a strength check. Could, could we, for flavor's sake, just say that I, like, pulled some down as I ran past? Sure. <laughs> Let me get its strength score. I won't get to do this big man thing for a while again. So. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. Take advantage. At least until next level, because... Then haste and enlarger actable. I like the spells that Ally can get. It's a man vantage. <laughs> yeah, so you pull the tree down in front of it, but it bats the tree away just as easily. And just absolutely lets loose one of its beautiful vocalizations. Ah. Uh. <laughs> All right, that brings us to Creature's turn. So it... That it... Ray, it gets really close to you, so it bats the tree aside, and I am going to need you to make me a strength saving throw. Actually, you know what? We're going to do a contested strength check. Okay. It is trying to grab you. I get advantage on those automatically. <laughs> and then I get to add my d4. That's the d8, not a d4. Dirty 20. Alright, so it has rolled... Let me do that now. It has rolled a 27. Ugh. Oh. Oh. Ray, it grabs you. And unfortunately, it has caused you to drop Allie and Tethys. Oh. Just gonna oh. shuffle him. Okay. There. So it grabs him. It doesn't really drag him far, but it does kind of jolt him enough that you two fall off of him. Well, ow. Is he is he grappled or is he, he was just grabbed? Um, check. 
So I'm going to say right now he is grappled. Mm. Gotcha. I'm just going to look at a... Uh... I'm just going to yell for everyone to run as fast as they can. All right. That brings us to the top of the round. Okay. Which is now Ada again? Mm hmm. So, seeing Ray grappled. Thirty. She is going to come back. And she is going to make a crossbow attack against the creature. Which does succeed. So she strikes it with her crossbow bolt. And it just sinks into the creature. No clear damage done. But Ray, its hold loosens on you a little bit. Hmm. As it turns its face to her. No, 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 no. Uh oh, <laughs> no. Oh, no. All right, Marcellus, you are into the front of the pack now. Man, oh, I wish Lord. I had Sentinel now. <laughs> so I am gonna run. <laughs> I'm gonna right, take Mar a dash this time. Okay, so Marcellus, since you're coming to the edge of the map, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna reset the rest of your motion all the way back down here at the other end. Okay, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Do we know how many more map runs we have? Like, is it clear how long this, like, trail it is? is? And the forest all... seems to go on forever. Roll my d20 again. There's this weird, surreal moment where we think we <gasps> see ourselves behind us. 18. <laughs> you know what, Allie? I love it. You do think you see yourself behind yourselves. And Marcellus, you said you rolled an 18? Uh-huh. You can make an attack against it if you would like to. I am going to turn around and cast Chill Touch on it. And you see this uh, skeletal, like, wispy Ooh. fog of a hand reach out and race towards the big tree thing when it Ooh. sees that, when he sees that Ray's, like, been grabbed by it. And... We're going to hope this does something. Okay. 16, uh, 20. Just hits. Woo. Okay. That's 1d8 of necrotic damage. So three mm -hmm. points of damage. And if I hit an undead target, it also has disadvantage on attack rolls against me until the next turn. And it can't regain hit points until the start of my next turn. All right. So, so you said that was stay holding on to him. <laughs> you said that's necrotic damage. Yeah. And this it has an effect against the undead. Yep. If you hit an undead target, it also has disadvantage on attack rolls against you until the end of your next turn. Ah. Uh, okay. Marcellus, as the hand grabs onto it. It doesn't react in the slightest. Uh. <laughs> I was afraid of that. Uh. All right. So well, sorry, I tried. Gonna keep uh. running. <laughs> ah. All right. Um, Best of luck to you. <laughs> good luck, everybody else. Allie, what are you doing? Um. I really want to hit it with a ray of frost and then run, but you keep telling me I can't do that. <laughs> You might want to run first. You might want to run first. Okay. So I'm going to use one of my dashes. So. Okay. Three. So it'll be. Put me right catty corner to Marcellus. Uh, Ray of Frost is only 60 feet, though, so I wouldn't be able to hit it. Um, anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess we'll just roll the d20 and see what happens. Yes. Purple dice is going in dice jail. That's a seven. Oof. All right. Tethys. Mm-hmm. 
you're up next. Tethys, as you are running, these hands reach up out of the ground. Skeletal hands, almost as if and they're 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 covered, partially covered in what looks to be the same material that the creature is made out of. Almost as if as it has reached into the ground to find things to grab you with. Okay. I'm gonna need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Um, that is a nat 20 for Woo! a total of 25. You dodge him. All right. What you doing? Um, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to use one of my dashes. Um, okay. So for counting wise, I was kind of catty cornered right here. Can we count that as me being here and doing one, two, three? And then three on the other end. Yeah, that's fine. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm like neck and neck with Allie. Okay. Um, and I will roll. That is an 18. Okay. You have the ability to make an attack against it if you would like to. Wait. Um, let's go. Well, seeing as how she probably noticed that Ada's crossbow. Um, oh my god, what do you call it? Uh, the thing you put in the crossbow. Okay. The bolt. Um, yeah, the bolt. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> She probably saw that that kind of sank into the swamp. So she <laughs> is going to try and cast Acid Splash on this okay. guy. Um, though, hold on. Now that, I, now that I've dashed, I don't think I can, so. <laughs> Range is only 60 feet. Oh yeah, you're way too far from it. Yeah. What do I want to do? Hell, might as well try, right? Yeah. Um, so short bow. That is gonna be a sixteen. Does not hit. Well, that's all I can do. <laughs> all right, Ray. Let's have you make another um, contested strength check. Oh, yeah. Give me one sec. Do, do, do. That is going to be a 25. Okay, it rolled a 16. You were able to get free. <coughs> you said I wanted to be free, though. Okay, you want to you wanna hang out and fight with this thing? I, I want to grapple onto it instead. Oh, remember what it did to everything it touched. I have resistance oh. to necrotic damage. Oh, baby, that's not necrotic damage. We'll see what happens. Okay, oh. you're... You're grabbing it? Well, it already grabbed me. Yeah, but you're grabbing it back. Right. Yeah, I'm giving everyone else a chance to run. Good thing I made a character sheet for this thing before this encounter. I was like, oh no, nah, I'll just figure out like one, what one of the attacks is. Like. You had to know somebody was going to try to insist on fight when it but... I did. Alright, Ray, as you grab it, you are going to take... You're going to take 15 points of acid damage. Halved, because I have... Resistance. Good. So only nine points of damage. <laughs> How'd you get resistance to acid? I have resistance to everything but psychic while raging. Oh. Because of bear totem. Because of fancy. Yeah, the bear ants. <laughs> I knew the cold was because you were Goliath. 
yeah, no, I just have resistance to everything but psychic damage. Um, but I mean, like, I don't care that it hurt me. I am still grappling it. And, um, since I still get an act, because I'm going to use it as my bonus action since I have mm -hmm. the, um, Tavern Brawler feet. I'm mm -hmm. just going to take my other fist and punch it. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Make an attack roll. Right. That is a, that is a natural 20. Yeah. Okay. Whew, so, it just because, because I am considered enlarged, my attacks do an additional d4. So this okay. is actually going to be 4d4 plus 4 damage. Okay. So 11, 15, 17 points of damage. All right. And um, just as a double check, there is nothing magical about your fist, correct? No. All right. Your fist just kind of sinks in. Ow. And Ada says, Ray, stop being an idiot and go! I'm waiting for Allie to run. I ran already. Why yeah. did you do it? Oh, it's Ada. It Whoops. He's going to look down at uh, Ada and go, You go and then I'll go. No! I can't leave until you leave. Can I? I know it's not my turn, but can I yell something at Ray? Sure. Uh, you hear from up ahead where Ellie's gone, Ray! I do not want to explain to Bit what happened to you if we can't get... Just get over here! <laughs> well, I gotta wait till my next turn, because <laughs> I've used my action and my bonus action, and I can't imagine I can grab Ada and dash with her, so... <laughs> so that does bring us let's see is Ada not moving? no she will not leave Ray okay um, so what the creature is going to do is it, oh. bears, it bears its teeth in Ray and opens its mouth to roar Ray as it does that you catch a brief glimpse of something almost human in there before it it doesn't hit you but it spits this black crystal kind of a bit over here. The crystal explodes. It takes down every tree in its vicinity and leaves probably a solid five foot crater in the ground. Oh shit. You realize if this had hit you, it probably would have killed you. What did it fire it at? It fired it over here. Gotcha. So the blast is about a 20 foot radius. All right. <clears throat> so we will bring that back to the top of the round. Marcellus. You there, Kurt? Ah, muted. Uh, <laughs> Marcellus would turn around and see them lagging behind and be like, oh, like mad at himself for even mm -hmm. wanting to stop, but he's going to. And he turns around and is going to cast another Eldritch Blast at it. Okay. Make an attack roll. Thirteen plus my forces. So twenty-one. It hits. Yeah. <laughs> another D ten of damage. So another five points of damage. Okay. And now I have to roll my D twenty. Mm-hmm. Oh. Three. Three. All right. Oh, dear. Don't say that. <laughs> All right, Allie, I think we said you were going next. All right. Oh, dear. 
Um, <laughs> I think that's the order we've usually we've kept it in. Yeah, she's she's gonna use her second dash. Okay, um, um Allie, I will say for his complication, um, oh. as Ada is also helping Ray try to like try to get Ray to leave this thing alone. The lantern swings around. The light strikes you directly in the eyes. Oh. I'm going to need you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Okay. Um. Shit. It's a disadvantage for me, too. Gan bate, as Jack would say. Uh, constitution. That's an 11. You've saved! Wait, I beat it with an 11? What did... It's a low DC. <laughs> I get a little scared because, yeah, <laughs> um, I'm I'm not good at, yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so can I still dash? <laughs> you can, Allie. As you dash and as you get through the tree line, you hear church bells. <sighs> and she starts. For a moment, anybody close enough hears her muttering in Elvish. Um, my role for complications. There's something I want to do. Okay. So I have foreseen this moment. That roll is a 50. <laughs> and okay. I'm going to look back over my shoulder. I'm going to cast message on the creature. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Can it reply? It can. If, now, if it speaks to a language, I understand what that means. <laughs> it is badly distorted and strange. It's trying to speak, but it's unintelligible. It's worth a shot. All right. But Allie, as you hear the church bells, you see a break in the woods. There are no more woods ahead of you. I'm going to shout, run! We're almost there, run! All right, and so for these purposes, Allie, I'm going to say you are free of the woods. Okay. So that brings us to, oh, did you roll your complication? Yes, that was what I used my portent for. That's, gotcha. Okay, all right, Tethys, you're up. Uh, wait, so where Allie is is like the end of the woods right now? Uh huh. Ooh, girl. <laughs> the, ooh, girl. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dash. I'll put the finish line here. <laughs> She's out. I'm gonna dash. Okay. All right. Tethys, you do also see the break in the woods. You see a church ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Um, allow me to roll. All right. Oh dear. Um, what? that is an eight. Eight. More birds? <laughs> More birds. All That's right. Cool. This session between me and, me and Kurt is just eight. Birds. Birds. Birds everywhere. All right, so that brings us to Ray's turn. Ray, uh, what you doing? Um, I'm going to grab Ada and run. Okay, so I will um, need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Don't forget your plus four. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm going to use inspiration on this roll because this makes me okay. nervous. <laughs> Alrighty. Roll high on the D. That's a 16. That saves. Oh, okay. Alright, make me a dash. And I'll just drag Ada's token with you. Is so it your so dashing? Yep, yeah, so that's going to be 60 feet of movement. Okay. We're back at the back of the, the front of the map now. 
Yeah, you're at the, the back front. Yeah, the back front of the map. We looped. Yes. Thank you. All right, so that brings us... Oh, Ray, roll me a uh, complication, please. That's ten. All right. Okay. All right. So, once again, the forest spirits try to help. You see them raising this absolute field of huge mushrooms. And for just a second, it kind of pauses and, like, tilts its head like it's thinking. I'm going to make it... It tries to ram its way through the mushrooms, but they're shockingly tough. It doesn't get through them immediately. Marcellus, it's your turn. Marcellus is going to see the church inside and he's going to dash. The happiest. Dash towards the church. Uh, exactly. <laughs> the only time. <laughs> Marcellus, it is an emergency. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, Allie and Tethys, you two make it to the church. And the door is open for you immediately by a man, like, in his sleep clothes. Glasses partially askew, a lantern in hand. He said, I heard the sound. Hurry, come in, come in. There's three I, do I make it as well? Oh, I'm sorry, Marcellus. Yes, you do. He ushers all of you in without bothering to, to take a second look at any of you. Ellie's gonna Thanks. cover near the door for Ray and Ada. All right. Yeah. And Marcellus would look around and say, Well, now that I'm here, I can't decide which one's worse. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Marcellus, I will need you to roll me a complication. Ugh, sex. Ooh. All right. So, Ray, as you go, as you run towards the edge of the woods, you are suddenly beset by a lot of illusory ghost-like wolves. I'm going to need you to make me either an athletics or an acrobatics check. I'll make an athletics check. All right. It's going to be at my D4. <laughs> that is going to be a 21. You make it through them. You push through them. And you make it into the church as well. I was about to say, if, if, if the wolves were going to do anything to me, I would have ended up like a rat, like trying to put like Ada in like my bedroll or something and just pushing her. <laughs> Hey, so that's... The, the, no, I don't have to do that for this safe. That's very smart. All right. So, congratulations. You've made it out of the forest. <laughs> that's a pretty intense way to... Because it, it, it is about 10. Mm -hmm. So, um, I will say that next session, you will all be able to take advantage of your level up. Does anybody need and any healing or we're getting a long rest? You're going to be getting a long rest. Now. Okay. Oh, thank God. Because, yes, <laughs> I did. If that thing hit me once, I think I would have been done for. Yeah. I, was, I mean, I was one good move away from like shit in my pants. Like, I had <laughs> one slot left. Boy, <laughs> am I glad I have the type of character I have? Yeah. That's why I play like tanks half the time is because even if I do something stupid, I won't be punished for it immediately. <laughs> you don't want to say stuff like that with Brandy as your DM. Yeah, it, it, that'll eventually get me in the butt, but... Vengeful <laughs> DM! <laughs> Ooh. Well, alright. Good work, folks. <laughs> it's fun. Yay, I'm glad. This is, like, stressful, but also fun. Yeah, this is, <laughs> and, like... Can we just almost die every game session? <laughs> I mean, oh, well, we, then... we might. I yeah. want a moment to finish identifying those things. I keep rolling eights, and I might, yeah. 
Because last session we almost died because like me and Marcellus got down. Like <laughs> Oh, I should a few times for me. Uh with you all as my witnesses, I'm going to very quickly roll my portents. All right. Ray now has an effective HP of 108 while raging. Or uh, 98 while raging. Nice. And I did increase my charisma. So that's Ooh. good. Okay, we have an 11 and a 12. I'm not sure what good those are going <laughs> to do. I'll throw them at monsters or something. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, good night, everybody. Yes, Bye. that was fun. Good night, Bye. everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.